According to the Centers for Disease Control, suicide is the second leading cause of death for teens ages 10 through 24 and young adults. More teenagers and young adults die from suicide than from cancer, heart disease, AIDS, lung problems, and everything combined. Each and every day in the United States, an average of 5,240 young people commit suicide. And Georgia and Douglas County are not exempt. During the 2015-2016 school year, a survey was done by the state of teenagers. And in that survey, 27,000 of our young people said that they had attempted suicide at least once during that past school year. Why? We're losing a lot of our next generation. What can we do? I'm Wes Tallon and teen suicide prevention is the focus for this round table. My three guests at the round table today are all involved in helping teens and their families in getting the help that they need. All three are licensed professional counselors. Joining me are Deb Price, Program Manager for Community Services with Willowbrook at Tanner. Megan Thompson, Assistant Director of Willowbrook at Tanner. And Brian Gibson, a primary therapist with Willowbrook at Tanner. Thank you all for being here with me today. Thank you, Thank you Wes. For our viewing audience and information, since I said all three are with Willowbrook at Tanner, it is a behavioral health facility located in Villarica that provides inpatient and outpatient care for adults, children, and adolescents. It's their task, it is their mission, and believe you me, it is their passion to help patients stay or become emotionally and behaviorally happy while receiving treatment so that they can return to a healthy life. Panelists, it distresses me that thousands of our young people are seeing suicide as a viable or their only option. Why is this happening? Mm. Well, and unfortunately, there's a lot of reasons. Um, but what we find, it's not talked about. Um, there is still a horrible stigma when it comes to asking for help. And so we have a lot of youth who are struggling and who are hurting, and they don't know where to go, or they're afraid to ask for help, or they just don't know how to verbalize it. And so what we find is they know something's up, they know something is off, but they're just not really sure where to start. And so they just don't. Um, and they begin to just kind of live with their distress or with their thoughts or with their emotions and they don't know what to do with it. What, what kind of things drive this train? Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I do. I think a lot of it is that they, they don't know what to do. Um, mm -hmm. And if the adults in their lives are not talking about it and they're receiving other messages, either from social media outlets or television shows or movies or just from their peers, mm -hmm. it's hard to combat that if the adults are not giving them a different message. So just like most teens often do, I mean, their peers are super influential in their lives. Um, social media, television, mm -hmm that's the messages that they're receiving and they're not unfortunately always healthy messages okay well, but mm -hmm. you know we're talking about these messages and all uh, what you know what is it in their lives that is coming at them so strongly mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a teenager. Explain. Help. And I think it comes from every direction. I mean, don't I you guys? So. Yeah. I think that's part of it is it doesn't cut off. And I know that we talk about this all yeah. the time. Um, yeah. When we were teenagers, and we say that a lot, 
it cut off. When you went to school, there may be things that happened with your peers. Um, there may be a fight or an argument, but your home was your safe place. It was your sanctity. It, it, you could get away from school or whatever's going on with your peers. Mm -hmm. And at least for that night, until you went back the next morning, you had a little break. Yeah. Well, now it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I mean, and when you continuously see the messages on, and, and I, I, not to throw any one social media outlet under the bus by any means, because there are very positive aspects as well, but post on Facebook or messages you're receiving, mm -hmm. um, videos you're receiving on Snapchat or whatever it may be, there's a, there is a lot of bullying. And, and teens do that tell mm -hmm. each other, you should just go kill mm -hmm. yourself, or why don't you go kill yourself? And those messages are, Again, said, coming at them, yes, sure. yeah. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It doesn't stop. Yeah. And that is difficult for teenagers or adults even to yeah. deal with. Yeah. I don't even think it's just the, the negative that goes along. They've got so much pressure for everything, whether it's school or jobs or picking a career or what mm -hmm. they want to do. Um, it's, it's in front of them all the time, like you said, and it doesn't cut off. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I had a set of Encyclopedia Britannicas, and that was about right. it when I was growing <laughs> up. But yeah, yeah. It, it, are pressures now different from what you're saying? They they appear to be. Um, I don't remember yeah. these kinds. Of, now you said the 24 hour. Now that I understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but you made a, a mention, Megan. Uh, why don't you just kill yourself and get it over with? Mm -hmm. Is it that flippant? It is mm -hmm. that flippant. Mm -hmm. um, so whether they're hearing it again from television shows or in song lyrics, or then they just repeat that and mm -hmm. they just very easily tell someone mm -hmm. to just go kill themselves. Or they even say, I'll just go kill myself. Mm -hmm. or I'll just go, I, I had a kid mm -hmm. tell me um, just a couple of days ago, I was just going to put a 45 in my mouth. Just, just like that, just very factual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very matter of fact. Well, and you know, we've talked about in the past, but even recently, you know, um, there's a TV series, 13 Reasons Why. I think that there's, there's a different level of liberty that TV shows and movies have now. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, that, you know, we're excited that things like 13 Reasons Why has started conversation yes. about mental health. So we're very, um, encouraged by that, but we want to make sure it's the right kind of conversation and it's not the, the unhealthy or the negative. And so we, we sort of started having pretty formal conversations when this particular series hit the, the TV waves because it was, it was sending the message that um, if, if I make the decision to take my life, it's other people's blame or it's other things. And so we, we want to change that conversation and we want to make sure that it's um, a healthy dialogue in terms of what would drive someone to choose that. What are some variables that I need to know for myself or my, for my friends and that kind of thing because shows like that, they can be health, you know, a positive thing, but man, we really got to be careful. And there were many myths throughout that show um, that I feel like we've tried to really discount, mm -hmm. um, whether mm -hmm. it be, you know, when a youth does reach out to a counselor a counselor responds. That's it's mm -hmm. not the norm in the show. Um, the young girl went to her school counselor and reported that, that these mm -hmm. horrible things had happened to her, and her school counselor did nothing. Um, so then that sends the message to so many of our teens: mm -hmm. if you go mm -hmm. tell someone, nothing will happen. It won't help. Well, that that's not that's not the case. Mm -hmm. There we have wonderful school counselors in the Douglas County School mm -hmm. System. Um, whether that be a parent or a neighbor or another counselor that your parents have connected you to people do listen and people do respond. So that's just one example yeah. in 13 Reasons Why. Yeah. And some of the worries that we talked about with teens even reporting things that adults don't think about, you know, if they're engaged in sexual activity, drug use, alcohol use, whatever, they're, they're a lot of times worried to come forward and talk about what's going on with them or what's going on with a friend because they don't want to be prosecuted or get a friend in trouble or feel like they're snitching on someone. There's so much that plays into the social dynamic as a teenager that, again, we just don't think about when it comes to, well, you can just tell us. Mm -hmm. No, I can't. And because if I tell you this one thing, 
these other 10 things are going to come out. Sure. And then I, that's too much pressure. I can't deal with all of that. So that way, and then I'll just hold this and sure. all of my secrets will stay safe with me. Okay, for, for our beauty audience, those who don't know about the, uh, the it's a series on Netflix. Mm -hmm. It's called 13 Reasons Why, mm -hmm. and a uh, young teenager committed suicide. She left behind 13 tapes uh, that went to people who she blamed for her problems in life, and, and some of them did horrible things to her. Uh, and it uh, goes through how they felt when they received the tapes and, you know, why she did, did these, these types of things. It's an extremely powerful series. It can generate discussion, but we want to make sure it's the right kind of discussion. We don't want to be able to get to these kids after they've recorded tapes and done the deed. Uh, we don't want that to be the, the, their solution. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, none of us wants this trend to continue. Yeah. Uh, that's why, you know, you, you, you agreed to join me here today. Yeah. So as I asked before, yeah. what can we do? I think we start with taking responsibility for the, the message that our children are receiving. And that's the responsibility of every adult in the community. Mm -hmm. um, they will receive messages from, again, I feel like I'm repeating myself, from various sources. And so we have a responsibility as adults to make sure that they're hearing the right message. Mm -hmm. um, so just responding when they come to us, whether it be dispelling myths or connecting them with support, again, we have to have the conversation and not play into the stigma and not be uncomfortable to talk about it with our youth. It has to be something that, that we discuss. Well, and, you know, we wish that every teen had a two-parent mm -hmm. household or had supportive adults in their lives, and we know not every teen does. Mm -hmm. So whether it is a teacher or a coach or a youth pastor or someone, um, you, you know, we, we try to be very careful. We talked about 13 Reasons Why. It has a very powerful message, and so we want to encourage, if that is something that your teen or your child or someone that you're involved with wants to view, we highly encourage that as the adult, you either view it prior to the teen viewing it mm -hmm. or you watch it with them so that as emotions are triggered or sparked or conversation is began, that you're there with the teen. Um, w when we say that this has a powerful message, it's an understatement. And so we've got a lot of young teens who are watching things like this and it's not just 13 reasons why but we have a lot of teens watching things right now that, that they don't know how to react to it they don't know how to absorb what they're receiving and putting it in a frame that's healthy and that's our concern they, are, they watch it and then that becomes what's okay or what's mm -hmm. their reality or oh well if you did it then I can and that's what we want to shy away from so adults Megan what you're saying the adults have to to get involved, mm -hmm. they have to start talking about what is healthy conversation. And mm -hmm. if you need help, I want to help you versus dismissing it and pretending it'll just go away. And I think you've seen that too, just in our work. I mean, ignoring is not a solution. <laughs> and we've always said that about our youth in terms of um, healthy sex practices. You mm -hmm. know, if you don't teach your children about sex, then someone else sure will. will. Um, it's the same thing, mental health, suicide. If we do not teach our children what's right and what's healthy, unfortunately they'll receive. Okay, how, how do our parents then get the tools mm -hmm. yeah. to, to be able to talk to these exactly. kids? Because, you know, the, the statistics that I referred to earlier, it crosses all uh, races, ages, uh, income, Absolutely. housing. Um, no one is left out. Parent, no, no one's left yeah. out. This is a, a common problem. But if I'm a parent, mm -hmm. how do I know, how do I learn how to have this healthy conversation mm -hmm. and how do I work with my teen, walk with my teen, talk with my teen? How do I recognize what are the signs that I should be looking for? 
yeah. the parents are involved in their everyday lives too. Sure. Yes, they've had children and everything like that. They also have pressures. Absolutely. Uh, bringing home the bacon. Yes. You know, they, yes. uh, the mortgage has to be paid, the mm -hmm. car payment has to be paid. Mm -hmm. We just went through a horrible recession. A lot of people are still unemployed or underemployed and they're ba barely making ends, ends meet. Um, you know, in, in the Douglas County School System, we have something like 62% uh, free and assisted lunch. So, you know, families continue to struggle. So their priorities, this may be adding to their priorities or putting food on the table and, and, a, and a roof over their head. Mm -hmm. This may be something totally new. How do these parents mm -hmm. get the tools mm -hmm. to work with their kids mm -hmm. and what do they need to be looking for in their kids? Well, I think that's one of, the, one of the beautiful things is the parents don't have to be the professional. Um, mm -hmm. There's so many resources that are out there, um, whether it's counselors or schools or websites or you know, helplines or anything else the parents don't have to feel like they have all the answers. Right. Um, I, I don't know any of my colleagues that wouldn't answer a phone and have a conversation with a parent about their child, patient of ours or not, if they felt like it was going to be beneficial to help that family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Netflix did something, a lot of people have a lot of controversy with this series because of the, the content matter presented, but Netflix went and put a another episode, if you will, at the end of this series that is about how to have this conversation about this show with your child. And also goes into some of the resources that are out there. You know, if, if your child or one of their friends or something like that is experiencing any of the signs or symptoms that they talk about in the series. I think you said four out of five teens that successfully commit suicide show signs. Um, so being able to, <clears throat> to refer people out, being able to say, look, I think we need to go in and talk to somebody about this. But like Deb said, not being dismissive, not saying, well, this is just, you know, I, I remember when I was a kid, and, you mm -hmm. know, it, it can't be that bad. It's oh, he's just being dramatic. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so much drama in your life and, and, and being judgmental and dismissive. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, well, are the, what are the signs that a parent yeah. should look for? Well, and, and I guess I want to piggyback what you're saying. I, I do think that sometimes parents, it, it's an awkward conversation. Absolutely. Especially Just like, like yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. Megan was saying, you had that conversation concerning sex. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's have the conversation yeah. concerning other matters, yeah. you know. Yeah. So if I've never had to have the conversation as an adult or as a parent, to bring it up with my child, it, it can be very awkward. But to parents who are going to be listening, um, I mean, quite literally, just asking the question, I'd love to just hear how you're doing, and then stop talking. Just listen. And, you know, we talk about this all the time. All the time. You know, we <laughs> want to fix. We want to have a solution. We want to come sure. right back and sort of give them the, the directive. But quite literally, a huge portion of our teens are literally just waiting for someone to ask. No magical question, just, how's it going? And not a flippant, as I'm walking down the hall, right. but asking. Well, as I'm grabbing the car keys and yes. going out. Yes. Okay, yeah. did you, you doing okay? Yeah, okay. yeah right. don't ask me yeah. if you don't really want to hear the answer. So if we're going to ask that kind of question, be willing to stop and to genuinely hear how they're doing. And they may not respond the first three times that you ask. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very foreign to them. You know, you, you don't care. You've never asked me in the past. So you've got, to, you've got to continuously stay connected to say, I genuinely care how you're doing. How's it going? Um, and I, actually, we were just talking too, you know, as parents, you know, we're not medical doctors, most of us, but we can treat fevers, we can treat, you know, upset stomachs, we can do sort of superficial interventions, and we do that. But at some point, if our child is sick beyond our understanding, we're going to go to the doctor. We're going to go to the professional because they're the ones who know how to fix our kids. And so that's the same concept with mental health. And, you know, if, if man, if we can make any shift in just the stigma of mental health, it's I, I have a limit to how much I can support my friend or my family mm -hmm. member or my loved one. And then I need to pass it off to the professional who knows how to intervene further. Mm -hmm. I can still love them and support them through that process. 
but I'm not taking all of that ownership and pretending like I, I can fix it, because oftentimes we can't. Um, everyone plays a role, I, I, we say this all the time, everyone plays a role in someone's journey of healing. So your role is very different than what my mm -hmm. role is. So my role, if someone comes to me, I may not know how to fix it, but I know Brian and he's a phenomenal counselor. Mm -hmm. So my role in their journey is connecting them to Brian. Then Brian can do the therapy. Mm -hmm. If I don't have the skill set to provide the therapy mm -hmm. and do what Brian does, oftentimes I can be making I can matters it. worse. Yeah, Absolutely. I can even make it worse because yeah. nothing's happening because I'm not trained yeah. and I don't necessarily have the tools yeah. and so things could be getting worse with this team and I don't even recognize it because I think mm -hmm. I'm here I'm listening I'm helping when really they need, they need right. a okay, but how do they, they make how do they come to that realization mm -hmm. that they can't handle mm -hmm. and then oh it's just a phase they're going mm -hmm. through or things like that or mm. mental health. Yeah. My kid's not crazy. That's right. Yeah, they're gonna put him in an institution or mm, or, right. or put him on some medication or something. Oh my god, he'll be bouncing off the walls or mm, something. Right. You know, you've got all of those right. preconceived notions right. that you know I don't think parents today are able, most of them that I know now they're, they can recognize that their child is having problems and maybe in trouble or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they know to reach out mm -hmm. to someone else and to whom. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, for our viewing audience at the end of the show, we are going to list uh, in the credits at the end of the show phone numbers, websites, mm -hmm. things like this mm -hmm. where you can educate yourself where you can reach out mm -hmm. for help phone numbers where you can call where you can encourage your team to call mm -hmm. um, and get that and, and be part of that conversation we're not going to leave you hanging with just our conversation here if you if you see symptoms if you're a friend possibly not a parent because what what you were saying, Deb, is uh, you know the parent saying, "Well, hey, how you doing?" Something like that, and the child may, "Who are you, and what have you done with my parent?" Mm -hmm. As teenagers thing. often do. As the teenagers yeah. often like do. Like mine this says, is, "Good." Yeah, right. good. good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you know, there's more. Yeah. But, yeah. but you know, yeah. I'll yeah. make you spaghetti and meatballs yeah. tonight <laughs> if you'll talk to me. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Hey, you know this kind of stuff. They're going to talk more to their friends. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to talk more to, uh, again, social media, um, Facebook or Snapchat or Instagram. And, and uh, all of this, the social media, the pressures are coming that way, but also the conversations are yes. going that way. So if you are a friend if, and you're a responsible friend and you're seeing these, these types of things and someone is actually saying the words, I'm thinking about killing myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't need to, to sugarcoat this. Mm -hmm. Suicide is mm -hmm. killing yourself, yes. yeah. is taking your own life. Uh, I read something recently about that, you know, obituaries say somebody passed away, they died. There's, that's a nice way of saying it. When we get to suicide and this kind of stuff, we need to talk in real terms. It's different. It's different. It's different. Mm -hmm. it's it's different. different. Mm -hmm. If you are a friend and you have a friend who is talking in these terms, mm -hmm. what should you do? I feel like we, we say this a lot too. Teenagers are very guarded with not only their information but their peers' information as well. The last thing any teenager wants to be um, associated with is being a snitch. It is a very derogatory term. No one wants that label on them um, as a teenager. But we really encourage our teens in those situations that you're not being a snitch. Ultimately, you're being a lifesaver. If you are telling your parent mm -hmm. or telling the school counselor or whoever it may be, your pastor, your youth leader, mm -hmm. you're saving their, you could be saving their life. So it, it's bigger at that point than being a snitch. Mm -hmm. um, 
And in the long run, the immediate, you may get some backlash in the immediate. Mm -hmm. um, the peer may in the moment be upset with you for telling, but in the long run, mm -hmm. again, you save someone's life. Yeah, we, you know, we have no idea who's gonna watch this, but I, I will say that in neighboring towns and cities and counties, when we talk to students who have had peers and friends take their life, mm -hmm. because we, have, we swoop in after these events take place and we provide grief counseling and we provide sort of immediate um, just support. And some of the biggest statements that are made by their friends and their peers is, why did I say anything? Like, I saw some stuff, I didn't, I just kind of chopped it up to they'll be fine or uh, well, I talked to them or I, you know, I, I made sure I sat with them or things of that nature, but they, that was their, one of the biggest takeaways for me was, why, why didn't I speak up? So it's, I mean, to piggyback what Megan is saying, um, this is no joke. And so, you know, to think that I, I'm equipped to handle such a thing as a teen Guys, even as adults, it's heavy stuff. Yeah. And so we just really want to implore, if you know of a friend or a peer or even just an acquaintance, <laughs> care enough and anonymously give the name to a, a, an adult. You know, slip a note under the school counselor's door, um, leave, you know, an anonymous message or voicemail. That's okay if you're that protective of, you know, your, your character or your name. But the, the bottom line is make it known so that the professionals and the adults can do something. Um, should, you, should you as a friend yeah. confront them though? Ask them? I, I think it's completely fine if you're, mm -hmm. if you're somebody's friend to say, mm -hmm. can I get you help? Are you thinking somehow, of killing yourself? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is it okay to ask them that? Absolutely oh it is. People absolutely. oftentimes say it's they don't want to bring it up because they're going to plant the seed. So if they weren't it's already, oh. right, if they weren't already thinking about suicide, if you've asked them, well, now they are. It's like but the guys, pink elephant in the middle of the room. Yeah. But that is so not true. <laughs> yeah. And guys, entire school systems believe that myth. Yeah. That if I have a conversation or an assembly or a mm -hmm. flyer or any kind of alluded to discussion that then that's going to more plant that seed. Plant the oh, seed. I think I'll, yes. oh yeah, so, we're going to have 10 more kids yes. start talking so about say, it. Huh? We want to say here today that is not true. That is completely a fallacy. And it's actually the more you discuss it and the more yes. kids and adults know what to do with it, the better outcome we're going to see. Um, you know, we, we have a program out of Willowbrook where we actually have therapists in some of the Douglas County schools mm -hmm. and in other county areas. Mm -hmm. And that is solely for the purpose of trying to get help and support to the students yes. where they need it the most. There's no other mission behind that program. To meet them where they are. To meet them where they are. And mm -hmm. so we just we really just want to encourage, um, you know, and you've asked several times, you know, what do we do? How do we know? What does it look like? And th the first step is learning. You know, if, if I don't know something, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna search it, I'm gonna Google it, I'm gonna learn more about it. And so we, we offer programming. Um, youth mental health first aid is probably our biggest uh, sort of thrust when it comes to helping people know what does mental health look like. Mm -hmm. And so that is for parents, that is for coaches, teachers, any adult that influences teens, but it's also for older teenagers as well. Yes. Um, we just, you know, got the green light for 16 and older as well, because they have to know what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I wish we had more time, but, you know, the idea is that if, if I'm starting to see my peer back out of things, kind of isolate mm -hmm. or not come around as much, or if I, if I hear them talking about it, mm -hmm. and maybe they're flippantly saying, oh, I'm just gonna kill myself, but it's more frequent, those are red flags. Uh, if their grades are declining, if a lot of self-defeating statements, um, sure. oh, I can't, I can't do anything right. Yeah. Um, this is never going to get better. Never. Hopelessness, hopelessness, yes. powerlessness. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's when we talk about the stressors when it just becomes too much yeah. and it just keeps piling on and it just just keeps piling on yeah. and they don't see a way out. Yeah. And it's twenty-four-seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does, is it pervasive over several areas of their life? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not just in their friendships, but also maybe at home or in the classroom or on their team. And so that's why it's critical that the adults watch because they, they interface with the students and the teens pretty frequently at times. And so if I can watch it, 
I need, you know, I think of it, you know, if I had a pain in, in my body, I probably wouldn't wait until it was so excruciating or so bad that the only intervention was an emergency room. You know, I'm, I'm gonna probably go to my primary care physician way before it gets that just life altering. But I feel like that's how we treat mental health. Yes, we is. wait until I'm expelled or I'm so distraught or so, you know, I've lost my job, my family, various things. And very we, reactive. We wait <laughs> until the end. And so again, part of our conversation today is it, we would never do that with any other sickness or illness. Right. Mm -hmm. We would go early, we would get it knocked out, take an antibiotic, whatever the case might be, and move on. And that's the approach we need to take with mental health. Um, and it, it, we are certainly not naive. We know that there are some that will watch this and they will, you know, ask themselves, but I'm already past that. You know, I'm already to the point where I've lost my family or my job or things like that. And it's, it's still not too late. It's still not too late. As long as you are breathing and you have, you know, a way to make a phone call or to right. reach out to someone, it's not too late. And so we just, that's the message, I think, is there's never a, a time where it's not okay. Your, um, your point there, it's not too late. All you've got to do, pick up the phone, knock on the door. Tanner at Willowbrook is located in Villa Rica. All three of you work with, with that wonderful organization. If a teen walks in your door, regardless of age, mm -hmm. anything else like that, and mm -hmm. says, I don't know I, what to do. I, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. From what y'all, the information you have prevented, you provided to me, their confidentiality is insured. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter yes. whether or not they have resources to pay for this help, yes. that they can walk in your door and get help. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have relationships with other hospitals, uh, yes. the Tanner system, the Wellstar yes. system, everything yes. else like that, mm -hmm. to where any team can walk into any place and say, I need help. Mm -hmm. They can also walk into any Douglas County Fire Department, yes. mm -hmm. Douglas County Sheriff's Office, and say, I need help. Yes. Uh, and th th they can get it. The resources are there. Yes. And it doesn't matter that whether or not they're underage or on no. any kind of a substance. No. No. And I think that's part of the message that, that we need to get out is that it's not your fault. Well, it, it can get better. Nothing is so bad that it can't get better. And I, I, we see that with our teens all the time. Um, they just, because it is so impactful and the emotions are so raw and there's so much going on and they don't know how to manage their relationships and the school pressures. They're trying to navigate through life as we all are. and and they sometimes just get lost in that. Um, but it's not too late. There is, there's all, it can always get better. Um, and sometimes our teens have a really hard time seeing that they and do. believing that. It's, it's all what's immediate for them right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm gonna, I'll share something. We had a really beautiful thing happen the other day. A group of teens brought one of their friends in to the hospital mm -hmm. because um, mm -hmm. they realized something was was going on and what they didn't realize was that team that they brought in had already prepared uh, where they were going to do this uh, where they were going to take their life how they were going to take their mm -hmm. life had mm -hmm. uh, the items ready <laughs> things like that Deb says it's not too late but tomorrow might be yes. you know if you see something going on chances are it's it's like an iceberg you're just seeing the tip that's showing above the water. There's so much more that may be beneath that and the time to do something is, is now. Please don't wait. Mm -mm. Yeah, please don't wait. And you know, I think that's the critical component. Um, you know, and a lot of us don't move because we don't know where to start. And you've mentioned there's going to be credits at the bottom of this. Um, 
we want you to know that there is a place to start. And, you know, Willowbrook is one of many, yes. but that's part of our service to the community is to say, just come and we will help you figure out what's next. You don't have to have the answer or know what specialist you need to see or who provides. We will help you with all that. We'll yeah, even help and you. And how to pay for it. And how to pay. Absolutely. Because and where to the go financial and impact, you know, oh, yeah. I don't have any money. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. and then, and realistically, I mean, you, know, you have your to-do list or your list of bills that you, you have to pay. You mentioned earlier, you have your mortgage. Yeah. We have food. Um, yeah. We need gas in the car. Yeah. Oh, well, pay my counselor. Okay, we're yeah. going to scratch that one off because yeah. I have to take care of all of these things first. Um, so it's really easy to mark that one off the right. to-do list. Yeah. It does get better. Yeah. It does get there's, I mean, there's, there's financial assistance, and I think what people don't understand is that there are methods to help if that happens to be the circumstance. Mm -hmm. Or, But again, I, I think we find that it's, it's really the, I just don't even know where to start, and so I just don't. Sure. But we would love to be your starting line, and we would love to help just figure out and kind of help navigate what is it that you need. And, and Deb mentioned it may not be Willowbrook. We okay. have beautiful relationships oh with yeah. numerous providers and services in the community. Mm -hmm. um, Jill Hobson here in the courthouse, she has a phenomenal program, mm -hmm. numerous programs for youth in the Douglas community, definitely a resource to tap into. Mm -hmm. There, we use one another. It literally, it takes Absolutely. the whole community. Mm -hmm. Willowbrook is not the answer for everyone, um, mm -hmm. but let us come in, come in, mm -hmm. do, let us do the assessment and connect you with, with what you feel like, with what we feel like you need. And that assessment's free and it's confidential. You yes. can come in, you can get it done, you can walk in the door, and that's going to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. There's help yeah. available. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, I think sometimes adults, parents, I mean, I'm, I'm a parent of teenagers as well. Sometimes it's just hard to start the conversation or to know how to ask it or to, you know, God, I don't want to seem like an old, you know, geezer who doesn't know how to talk to teens anymore. So one of the things that we want to encourage as many people to attend, and it's free as well, mm -hmm. is the Youth Mental Health First Aid. It is, mm -hmm. it is nationally recognized. Um, military, school systems, major hospital systems utilize this, but it's, it's the lay explanation of what mental health looks like in teens because we've said it already in the show, what's being just a teenager versus what now it's kind of past the, the okay, line. The right. How do I know if it's just a teen being a teen versus, and so the, the, the answer really is you don't. You don't. <laughs> you don't have to know. You just have to know what it looks like and where to connect it when it's right. time. And care okay, enough so, to go and yes. look for that information. Yes. Right. So you know, we are offering this class in the local Douglas Carroll um, area multiple times throughout the month. Um, we're teaching, you know, churchgoers, foster parents, coaches, any, anyone, anyone, business people who have teens come into their store, who purchase their merchandise. They want to know how to interact and watch and see. So we've seen a beautiful interest and kind of a response, but it, it's free, and we want you to take advantage of it while it's available. Um, and so that that would be a huge encouragement, is to learn and to kind of get educated. So it does teach you and, and kind of tie yes. you into the feelings that teens yes. may be expressing, or yes. to to point you in the direction of if they're experiencing very stress a very stressful situation. Yes. Um, Maybe their parents are going through a divorce. Yes. Maybe they've lost their grandmother. Um, so life-changing events that, yes. that children are very resilient. And, and they oftentimes, we as adults say, oh, they'll be all right. They'll be all right. Kids oftentimes, and I think about divorce in particular, they oftentimes try to hold it together Absolutely. because of all the chaos between the two parents. But yes. it doesn't mean they're not dying on the inside. Yes. Their world's literally falling apart. Yes. As dysfunctional as it may have been, it may have needed to separate. But for a child, there's nothing like having both of your parents right. together. Yeah. And, and so for us just to be cued in to those events and just watching our children, and, and Deb said it earlier, just listen to them. We like to do a lot of talking as adults. <laughs> we want to fix it. We want to yeah. correct them. We want to let them know what they did wrong, yeah. how they could have done it I better. Did it. This right. is how I did it. Right. Yeah. Shut up and listen sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
my thanks to you, mm. all three of you, for being with me here today. Mm. And I'm going to end uh, the show by talking to any teen who may be watching. Mm. And I want you to know that because there are things I wanted to say, I made myself some notes because I'm, it comes from the heart, but I want to, there are some things that I want to cover. Deb said, you know, us old geezers, <laughs> you know, trying to tell you things like that. Yes, I'm one of those old geezers in high school, uh, middle school, high school, and even college are completely different now yeah. than when, when I was there. And there is a whole lot of stress that's controlling your life and the 24-7 uh, bombardment of social media and television and influence through everything under the sun that was not there when I'm growing up so no I don't know what you're going through there's also the fear of failure you didn't pass your math test that research paper that paper that English teacher wants or that history teacher wants that's due tomorrow and you haven't done the first thing of research research on it much less uh, written the first word. You want to go to college, but that SAT test is looming in there, and then you, you know you've got to get above a certain score or something. So all of these things are driving you crazy. You're not crazy. Trust me, we've all been there ourselves in some form of another. And what we want you to remember is that it's okay to not be okay. It may seem like other friends that you have, some of your friends, your family, they have it all together. Believe you me, they don't. <laughs> they don't. Whether you are president of four clubs and you are the football star, the track star, or something like that, and you can't grasp chem chemistry and you're going you're, you're cracking up over this. No one is perfect. We all have those days when nothing seems to go right. And all you want to do is stay in bed and binge watch Pretty Little Liars or Game of Thrones or something like that. You may think you can handle it, but junior high, high school, and college can be too much for anyone to deal with. So why is it such a big deal to ask for help? The answer is, it's not. We've all needed some help at one time or another. The message of this show, I hope, will be there are people out there, some of whom you know, some of whom you may not know, all of whom are there to help you. All you've got to do is pick up the phone, knock on a door, walk into a building where you know there are people who care about you. Put that pride aside and admit that you're just not handling it well. Let other people help you. Asking for help can be as simple as talking with a friend. Your friends know what you're going through. You know what they're going through. If you're having a good day, talk to a friend who's not and help them out. Need to talk to someone who's not a friend? You want to stay anonymous? call a hotline. At the end of the show, we're going to have phone numbers of hotlines where you can call, remain anonymous. The Trevor Project is one of them. If you need help, they will help you. Next time you're feeling stressed out, take a deep breath. Just breathe. And remember that it's okay to not be okay. Advice from an old geezer who's been there. 
I hope that this discussion has brought some focus into this subject for you. Thanks for joining me. I'm Wes Talon. See you next time.